Hello, I'm going to discuss derivation 3.22 in this video. Okay, so we have uh, the conclusion of sum x, fx, f, and only of p. So we'll make an indirect assumption in qn. And we have our two premises, sum x if fx and p, and sum x if p then fx. I'm going to go ahead and instantiate these right away, just on these lines. Okay, so we have... Um, fi then p and p then fj. So we have this universal quantifier, so we're going to want to instantiate it to both i and j. I'm going to go ahead and, and be that uh, negated quantifier. All right, so if we look at this, we see, well, look, this tells us that if fi then p is true. This tells us that if fi then not p is true. That means that fi has to be false. If fi is false, that means that p is true. But if p is true, then we're going to get both that fj is true and that fj is false. So let's work through this. So we'll say show ant of 3. Assume id. Oh, no, you know what? It's going to be easier if we do it with... Uh, does it matter? Let's do it with p, actually. Yeah, let's, let's show p. So show ant of 4. So we have not p here. So what can we do with not p? Well, with not p, we can do 5, 8, b, p. But with not p, we can also do uh, mt. So there's an indirect derivation. So now, using p, uh, we can get uh, fj. And using p, we'll double negate it, and we can get uh, not fj. Let's see. So we want 13. Oh, did wrong double negation to the wrong thing. We want double negation of p, and now 6 and 13 be p, and we have a contradiction. So there it is. Um, as long as you're sure to instantiate this universal to both i and j, you're good to go because you have both of these, and they will interact with those, and that's what you need. Okay, so that's 22.